is my version of how the Jane Addams Award came about. It's a historical fiction. Yes, I know we need an award to give to children's books that celebrate peace and social equity, but who could we name it after? We've talked about a lot of different candidates, but I think I have the perfect one. Her name is Jane Addams. She was born in 1860 in Illinois. And her name was Laura Jane Adams. That's how she was born, but she likes to be called Jane. Anyways, she was one of eight, or one of nine children. She was the eighth out of nine children. And she was born to a very wealthy family. They had lots of money. Her dad was a senator, and he was actually friends with Abraham Lincoln. Amazing. Anyway, she was used to being around not only wealth, but also people of great influence. And I think maybe that is what inspired her to become amazing. So first of all, she went graduated from seminary in um, 1881, and it was an all-female seminary. And then she went on to go to medical school for a little while, but it seemed like she wasn't quite figuring out what she wanted to do. So then she decided to go with her friend to London, England, and there they visited the Toynbee Hall. And this hall was a place that took care of the poor and um, homeless people. And they were so inspired by this that they went home and said, we want to start a place like this in Chicago. So her and her friend went on and in 1889, they co-founded the whole house. And the whole house became a place that worked with um, immigrant and poor people. There, they grew and grew their cause to not only grow in influence, but also in the amount of property that they took over. Um, their influence not only helped poor and immigrant, it also went to provide childcare. It also provided educational classes for people that came there. Uh, it had a public kitchen that served the community and it also had an art gallery. So this was a place of great influence in the community where she lived. Um, she then went on to um, become one of the members of the Chicago Board of Education in 1905. And in that, she rose to be on the school management committee for a long time. She also was the first female president of the National Conference of Charities and Corrections, which later became known as the National Conference of Social Work. So she was very influential um, in really whatever she did. She also established the National Federation of Settlements and she was the top post in that for over 20 years. She was an anti-war, pro-peace activist for all of her life. She protested World War I, so she was a hippie before it was cool. And she was a chair for the Women's Peace Party. She was a president of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. And she won the Nobel Prize for all of her efforts in peace and anti-war. She shared that Nobel Prize with someone else, but I personally don't think they could have possibly deserved it as much as she did. Maybe, maybe, but I'm a little biased. She's my favorite. So for all of those reasons, I think she should be the person that we name this award after. Thank you. Hello, I'm going to be talking about the criteria of the Jane Addams Award. Um, so, it has two parts. The first part says, exemplify literary, visual, and aesthetic excellence. And then for the second part, there's um, multiple parts to it, so I'm just going to list those real fast. It says, to invite dialogue, passionate response, purposeful reflection, and deep questioning related to one or more of the following. How can people work with 
compassion, empathy, and activism to advance Jane, As Jane Addams' belief that true peace is not merely the absence of war, it is presence of justice. How can people of all racial identities, gender identities, religions, abilities, classes, and cultures live and work together equally and peacefully? How can people, especially young people, break cycles of fear? How can they respond to creativity nonviolently and humanely to in injustice and conflict? How can people work together to address problems and oppression caused by pre prejudice, war, violence, social injustice, racism, sexism, ageism, classism, and all hierarchies of power and opportunity? How can people build respect and understanding for differences and for the worth of importance of all individuals and groups? And how can people work for power and equally for women throughout the world? So that's just the criteria for the Jane Addams Award. And thanks for watching. Hi everyone, the book that I'm going to review is called The Book Itch, Freedom, Truth, and Harlem's Greatest Bookstore. This book received the Jane Addams Award in 2016, and while reading it, you can clearly see why it was chosen for this award. This book is about a young African-American family who owns a bookstore in Harlem. The young boy meets a few people important to history, such as Muhammad Ali and Malcolm X. The boy's dad knows the importance of reading, and with his bookstore, he creates a place where people could come and read, participate in conversations, and even receive advice. Um, Malcolm X even held rallies outside his bookstore before he was shot and killed. Uh, I really like the inside of the book. It has a couple of the owner's sayings. You can go on to school. There are things you can learn from your teachers, but don't you stop thinking for yourself, and don't you stop asking questions. Knowledge is power. You need it every hour. Read a book. You are not necessarily a fool because you didn't go to school. Words. That's why people need my our bookstore. The illustrations in the book are very colorful. I think they fit the story very well. And this book would be a good choice in a classroom um, when learning about uh, black history and all the social inequalities that they faced. Thank you. Hello everyone, the book that I'm going to present to you is called Separate is Never Equal, Sylvia Mendez and Her Family's Fight for Desegregation, written by Duncan Tunatu. This book has won the Jane Addams Award as well as the Pura Bel Prey Award. After reading this piece of children's literature, it's obvious as to why this would be a Jane Addams award-winning book. It promotes peace, social justice, equality, and a world community. The text received the award in 2015 as a book for younger children. So Sylvia and her family moved from Santa Ana, California to Westminster, California, where her father moved up from being a field worker to leasing a farm. Sylvia's father was from Mexico, but he was a U.S. citizen, and her mother from Puerto Rico was a U.S. citizen as well, considering that as a part of the U.S. But because of the children's Hispanic appearance, the school in which they were going to attend denied them. They were told that they needed to go to the Mexican school. After their aunt tried to enroll them, they were denied. Their father took matters into his own hands. So here is the aunt's two children which they were allowed to enroll in school, but because they all had a Hispanic-looking appearance, they were denied. So, Sylvia's father took matters into his own hands, and he approached higher authority, but they all told him that that's just how it is done. Much different from the elementary school on 7th Street they were going to enroll into, the Mexican school was not clean, didn't have a playground, and was surrounded by an electric fence with cows on the other side in a pasture. Here's the Mexican school they went to. So as the school said, the Mendes children entered the Mexican school, 
However, the father created a petition, but parents at the Mexican school wouldn't sign because most worked on farms owned by white families and they didn't want to risk their jobs. It was more than school being segregated. Pools, movie theaters, and even parks were as well. There were such signs that looked like this. One day, a truck driver told Mr. Mendez, Sylvia's father, how he could file a lawsuit, so he did just that. When the case was seen by a judge, the superintendent had to give answers as to why the children were denied. He gave the most degrading answers as if they were inferior to white students. He mentioned language, which was not an issue. They all spoke very great English. Um, he also stated poor hygiene, but Mr. Mendez's lawyer proved how terrible it was to segregate children into separate schools. And after, the year, after a year, the judge made his ruling that regardless of background or race, all children were allowed to attend any school that they wanted. But then the school board appealed and there was a new trial held. They were supported by many of other ethnic background organizations. And in 1947, the Court of Appeals ruled in favor of the Mendez family and the law was signed into action. And at last, seven years after this case was held, the Brown versus Board of Education case desegregated schools within the entire country. It wasn't just only California anymore. So I really love the fact that in the back of this book too, there is a glossary to define terms that are used throughout the story. There's also a list of websites here that students are able to visit to learn more about the particular case. It's a less known court case, but it's what brought us to the Brown versus Board of Education ruling. And it's a very important part of desegregating schools. So I would use this text in a third grade social studies lesson and actually there's many standards that you could use for this, but one in particular is SS 3.15. Examine major events in world history to understand how discrimination and oppression of various racial and ethnic groups have contributed towards movements for social justice. This book could additionally actually teach students to never give up and fight for their rights and what you believe in. No matter what ethnic background you come from, all people deserve equal rights and opportunity, just as Sylvia's father did not only for his children, but the rest of the Hispanic culture as well. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, my name is Aubrey. Um, for my part of the project, I am reviewing a book that has won the Jane Addams Award. And the book I chose is called Separate is Never Equal. I hope you can see it. There's a little bit of a glare. Separate is Never Equal by Duncan Tanatua, I believe is how you say his last name. This book won the Jane Addams Award in 2015 in the Young Readers category. And the book simply is about um, a girl named Sylvia Mendez and her family's fight uh, for desegregation. Sylvia and her brothers and her family moved to Westminster, California from Santa Ana, California. And... Uh, their grandmother tried to enroll them in a school called Westminster Elementary. And the receptionist lady told them that they would need to enroll in the Mexican school down the street. That they were not allowed to enroll at, in Westminster. Um, and upon hearing about it, their dad was furious. And he went to the board. He went to the superintendent. And they all said the same thing. You need to go down to the... Mexican school and enroll in Hoover Elementary, which was the Mexican school. And so he took it to to court and got them approved to go to Westminster School along with every other race, every other background, every other child. And yeah, so that's pretty much the book in general. There's a couple things I really like about the book. It The author's note in the back of the book is is telling the real story of Sylvia Mendez because Sylvia Mendez was indeed a real child. And then he includes pictures of her. So this is her when she was little, when she was going to elementary. And then this was this is her now. She just won the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 
2011. And then these are her parents. And then on the top, she describes Westminster as um, lush and beautiful and a place where you want to go. There's trees. There's a playground. So that was Westminster Elementary right there. And then she describes Hoover as the exact opposite. And this is Hoover on the bottom. And you can kind of see in these two pictures the difference between the two schools. Um, and I really... I do think this, this book deserved the Jane Addams Award because the Jane Addams Award recognizes books of literary and aesthetic excellence and engaging that effectively engage children in thinking about peace, social justice, global community, and equality for all people. And I definitely think this book does that um, as you know the father fights for their equality and being able to go to different schools and having the option to go to other schools. So I definitely think this book uh, deserves its award, and it is a good book for any time that you guys want to read it. It's a good book. It's a good story. Um, so yeah, I thank you for listening. I did the history on the Jane Addams Award. This award was my favorite one. This one was really interesting. So I'm going to read the mission statement for the award first. Um, it is, the Jane Addams Children's Book Award annually recognizes children's books of literacy literary and excellence that effectively engage children in thinking about peace, social justice, global community, and equity for all people. So what that pretty much breaks down to is just getting people to think more about peace and social equality. So the award started off um, one book per year. There was no categories at all. It was just given to one per year. In 1993, a picture book category was added in. So now there's one for older children and one for younger children. Then in 2003, the award went from being giving out in September. September was significant because that was Jane Addams birthday. So that's why it was given out in September. Um, it switched to being given out in April, which is the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom birthday. And that's who had this award at first. They're the ones that initially gave it, and then it switched over um, to solely Jane Addams. But they decided to honor the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom by giving it out in April for their birthday. And then something really interesting I found is in the whole 60 years that the award had been given, there was only one public controversy, and it was The K by Theodore Taylor in 1970. Uh, so the award was given in 1970. It was taken away in 1974 because some people felt that the book didn't deserve it. Then it was given back and then the author actually kind of declined and gave it back. So the book is still on the list, um, but that was kind of a, a crazy thing that happened with the award that doesn't usually happen with a lot of awards. And then the last thing is some of the best-selling titles. Um, I wasn't able to actually get them, but I just want to read some of them. Um, when Sophie Gets Angry, Really, Really Angry, We Shall Overcome, The Story of a Song, Amber Was Brave, Essie Was Smart, Separate Is Never Equal, Brave Girl, Step, Stomp, Stride. And I think these are really interesting all the titles you can kind of already tell before even without looking at them even without reading them what they're going to kind of be about so i thought that was really interesting as well